guys, Dantix here, back with some more juicy cyberpunk information. I've had to put you guys in the drip feed recently. You're ravenous, wanting more and more, but I'm the same. So I've gathered information from around the net, from trailers, developers, friends, and some new sources, such as the Dark Horse art book and new preview footage. So in this video, I'll cover NPCs, flying cars, skill aptitude, mission types, who you can romance, morality, and other random bits of information. So buckle up. Before we start, I want to talk sources. Like all my videos, I try to credit all that are due, but in this case, it's simply impossible to track since most information comes from videos and developers. However, Michael Stitch has helped me put together a lot for this video, so thanks to him. If you feel you did some legwork but I'm not aware of it, let me know. Also, I'm giving away loads of copies of Cyberpunk 2077 before release, so you can enter below. Be sure to join the notification squad as well, and join my socials and Discord to talk to me directly. Okay, let's begin. There's a PC in your apartment that you can use. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you can do in the PC yet, but maybe it helps you track stats, get some extra detail on things, and maybe reset perks. You can pet cats, which means you can potentially pet other creatures. However, it's hinted that with most animals, they will be cybernetic. This is a dystopian world, and what would a dystopian world be without robo pets? You can dismember or critically injure enemies and leave them alive instead of killing them, which makes the pacifist playthrough sound a bit easier. Considering we'll have access to remote hacking as well as sneak, I imagine many people will be going this route. It's unconfirmed but hinted that the game will have a hidden morality meter, keeping track of how many good or bad choices you make. I foresee that a good and bad ending will be there, with flavor sprinkled in based on your individual choices. Considering that what you do during side missions also impacts the ending, we have a lot of replayability. You may remember the Katana gameplay I put out recently, and how I didn't like the baby blue colour of the blade. Well, I thought I'd point out that all weapons and cyberware will be colour customizable. Some will be able to be modified as well. It also should be noted that this footage was from the start of the game. Like any RPG, you get better at the skill the more you train it over time. So an end game character would be better at using weapons than an early game one. If you pick up a weapon and have no skill with it, you'll have trouble aiming and reloading. If you pick up a katana with no skill, your animations will reflect that. It'll only get better with time. It's also hinted that you might have access to porn-related illegal brain dances on the black market. So those wanting to virtually live out a porn experience, you might get the chance. If this is true, I foresee crazies on the internet trying to spin it into something negative. I already posted about this on YouTube, but for those who missed it, the mini-map has mission icons, and they can be broken down as main jobs, side jobs, gun for hire, search and recovery, thievery, agent saboteur, SOS, merc needed, special delivery, assault in progress, cyber psycho sighting, clothing stores, ripper docks, techies, weapons slash gun shops, trainers, food slash restaurants, bars, and other side quests. So you'll have an absolute ton to do. I'm especially excited for the cyber psycho sightings because these will no doubt be hard and varied mini boss fights. Do you kill or do you hand them over to the police? Also, I wonder if some missions are only there for a limited time, like say the SOS missions. Speaking of minimap, Surveil Chow from Reddit has pieced together information and made this map of Night City based on recent information and speculation. Take a look. Some of you may think this is quite small, but it's deceptively big. Check out where he said Lizzie's and the Afterlife is. If you watch the latest footage of V in the helicopter flying to Lizzie's, you realize that this is quite a big area. Also keep in mind that Night City is surrounded by country and the Badlands and will be traveling to other minor areas. I really don't think total play area will be a problem. Now, IGN recently posted a preview of the up and coming Dark Horse art book, which is looking great by the way. It'll be released on the 28th of July. So let's take a look. First is the poster art we've seen before. Next is a bit of backstory to the world. I'll let you pause and read it at your own pace as reading this all out will waste a lot of time for those not too interested. Next is telling us what to expect in the art book. Cyberware, weapons, vehicles, brain dancing, and net running. Sadly, as this is a preview, we won't be seeing it all. So here's a page from the vehicles section. One thing to note is they mentioned that there are water vehicles, airplanes, drones, aerodynes, and assisted combat personnel armor. I'm not sure if these are just previewing what we see in the world or if you can pilot these vehicles. My suspicion is you can't, as it was mentioned elsewhere that V won't be able to pilot flying vehicles. Although, 
With how much speculation is flying around, pun intended, I wouldn't be surprised if some is wrong. However, I'm crossing my fingers that we'll be eventually able to steal flying cars as they litter the airways. The next page is a history of vehicles after the fourth corporate war. Once again, welcome to pause if you want to read more about the history and their fewer woes. The lore in Cyberpunk is rich and deep, but it kind of deserves its own video. Right now, we're focusing on the game and the gameplay. The last preview page is about net running. It's just a tease of what's to come in the following pages, so my friends, we will have to wait for the Dark Horse art book to release to get all the juicy details. Don't worry, I'll be sure to pick it up so you don't have to. So for all those confused about street cred, it's basically an alternate leveling system. It can only go up and it can't go down. So you can do things that would otherwise lose you street cred in real life, like snitching on criminals and sleeping with the less than physically inclined, and you'll be fine. You need a particular level of street cred to buy the best items and get the best cybernetics. So it's a way to gate you from the start. Better get cracking to build up your rep. So here's an interesting point mentioned. The number of NPCs in an area will be connected to the time and where you're located. They can also urinate realistically. So enter a scummy back alley and you might see someone relieving themselves. It's an extra detail that we haven't seen since Conker's Bad Fur Day. If you also stare at someone long enough, they will dynamically respond to you. It's hinted that attributes can be raised up to level 20. Being that you can only put up to 10 points in an attribute at the start of the game, that will be quite a bit of investment to get one up to 20, and I feel like most people won't get there unless they dedicate themselves to an attribute. Keep in mind, you don't get an attribute point every level. That being said, level 20 in, say, Reflex will mean you can get pistols and the other Reflex skills up to level 20 as well, so there must be a lot of interesting rewards for doing so. It's also hinted that there are at least 20 Cyberware mod slots, which means there's a lot of Cyberware you can choose from. Just remember, you'll be losing your humanity the more you equip. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but it's suggested that there are 85 side quests, all of which are not your standard fetch related side quests, but have a, a proper written story based around them. That's, that's a crazy amount, guys. When you consider that some of the choices are said to reflect the end game, that's pretty damn cool. So nudity can be turned off and on, so streamers or the squeamish can play without being assaulted by genitals, although we're assaulted by them daily anyway, so who cares. As of right now, we have a few confirmed romances. Meredith Stout and Judy Alvarez. Meredith is the corporate agent we saw during the hands-on demo. She seemed cold and ruthless and uses you to get what she wants through subversion. When taking the corpo life path, you see through this subversion and call her out. Perhaps she sees that strength and it may lead to a blossoming romance. <laughs> there will be no button presses when it comes to betting people. There will be no like little heart icons. It will happen more organically in Cyberpunk 2077. In the case of Meredith, I'm, I'm super curious to how it will turn out. She seems like a hard ass, which is awesome. So Judy is a more obvious romance path. Though it's hinted she may be only interested in the lady parts. So <laughs> best of luck to you without them. So we have some footage from the preview event in Europe. It's not in English, so it won't pop the sound on, but during it, you can see small clips of them playing the game. I've edited them and let's take a look. So the first clip, we see the player in a brain dance editor, creepily watching two people riding the bone train. I'm not sure if this is one of those porn brain dances or one that involves a story plot, but he seems to be having a bit of fun with it. Next is some footage of the pistol we saw during the car chase. It's got quite a bit of kick to it. CD Projekt Red blur the footage every time it fires so you can't see the damage numbers, but it looks like it crits on the first hit. Either way, this means investing in the pistol skill probably won't be a letdown like it is in many games. So here's some more footage of areas we've seen before, but this view makes it seem more real and less like gameplay footage handpicked for us to view. Next, it looks like the player is pointing a gun at the store clerk, though because he doesn't have his hands up, I don't think this is having an effect. I could be wrong though, based on his stance, but if robbing stores are in the game, this is yet again something GTA fans will compare to. I wouldn't be surprised if robbing stores dynamically is in. So here's some more footage of Brain dancing. Here we have the player driving a car that isn't V's. I'm not sure if this is the car you're, you're given or if he stole it, but he's driving in third person and the camera's blurred. So that's all the information I have for you today. Once again, thank you so much for the support. 
What do you think of everything that I laid out? This will no doubt be the biggest release of the year and I can't wait to see more. So for everything Cyberpunk 2077 and RPG, join the notification squad. Ciao friends.